Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Now is the time for a great reset. We've got that story, plus ham-fisted propaganda. But first, on this epic and important episode 410 of New World Next Week, it must be said, this is not a revolution. It's a blueprint for locking the nation down. This is fantastic stuff from John Whitehead, cross-posted over to ActivistPost.com. John Whitehead writes that anytime you have an entire nation so mesmerized by political theater and public spectacle that they're oblivious to all else, you'd better beware. Anytime you have a government that operates in the shadows, speaks in a language of force, and rules by fiat, you'd better beware. What is unfolding before us is not a revolution. The looting, the burning, the rioting, the violence, it pretty much makes an anti-revolution. The protesters, of course, playing right into the government's hands. James, as I've talked about this on very recent weeks here of New World Next Week, that's the one thing the government knows how to take care of is when you get violent. The powers that shouldn't be want this. They want an excuse to lock it all down and throw the switch for just full-on martial law, not martial law light. They want a reason to make the police state stronger. Justice Department deploying federal prison riot teams to various cities. More than half the nation's governors are calling on the National Guard to quell civil unrest. Growing numbers of cities having just barely emerged from medical martial law are once again being locked down, this time in response to the growing upheaval. James, Cassie and I were kind of talking about this. It's almost like they locked everybody down and lied about it being for COVID. Then people riot and they lie and say it's about killer cops. I think these are the great corona riots of 2020, no matter what emotionally driven narrative they're going to try and give people. But this was all normalized. 20 years ago, so I posted to MediaMonarchy.com, December 19th, 2007, police brutality and torture are normal after 9-11. And who helped normalize all that? Our previous puppet presidents who, oh man, wouldn't you know it, they're on the scene right now. George W. Bush says George Floyd's death reveals America's tragic failures. Bold words for a skull and boner war criminal and the guy who executed 152 people as governor of Texas. Oh, Obama hosts town hall discussion of reimagining policing after George Floyd's death, which is a really great way to get black folks to chill out, vote Biden, and of course distract from your own record of brutalizing protesters at Standing Rock and Occupy, not to mention bombing so many countries, five, remember, five more than Bush, that he ran out of bombs. James, this all feels so very staged, rigged, ginned up, fake, like a movie, like a movie called The Purge, Election Year, which of course was episode 38 of your film Literature and New World Order, where we talked about The Purge trilogy Spoiler, the end of the trilogy in the film is about convincing the resistance that they should go vote instead of committing murder. Thousands march in wake of George Floyd's death from Amsterdam to Tokyo. Even Japan got in on the act, James. Interesting one from agorusnexus.com. Cookie cutter unrest in Japan shows the global COVID clampdown is no accident. Man, man, I've never before in my life seen the whole world so mad over a Freemason porn star getting killed by his co-worker buddy of 17 years, have you? That's that's what that's what this is all about, right, James? Right. Uh, no, this is a, a redirection, obviously, and what we are living through right now is a global transformative event that fundamentally is about a restructuring of the international monetary order and all of the economic ramifications that come down from that. One way that is going to manifest is in social unrest, and that's what we're seeing. So the reason that this feels so staged and rigged and phony is because clearly there uh, is a switch that the media uses. And when they want to report on police brutality and, and make it an issue, they can flip that switch on and do so. Uh, but of course, they could do so on any given day because there are dozens of such incidents every single day, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. But there are certain times when they flip the switch and the social unrest kicks in uh, via various methods. And uh, uh, there are many people out there documenting the various uh, trickeries that are going on and CNN reporters being arrested live on air and dramatic footage and all of this kind of stuff that's going on. But fundamentally, this is about the great, the great economic reset that is coming. Uh, wow, does that sound familiar to anyone out there? That's yeah, well, yeah. It's coming, coming even even sooner than you might actually think, James. This is interesting. You make a good point because this is kind of like you talk about flipping on the switch of reporting on something that makes it seem like it's a, just an epidemic, kind of like reporting every health related death and making people believe that it's a giant scamdemic that is, of course, breaking out. 
So, as, as you're basically teeing it up right on time, Brave New World Order minions all start moving their grand chessboard pieces. Of course, never letting a crisis go to waste, which I believe is the caption to the photo on the World Economic Forum website, which features the post, Now is the Time for a Great Reset. This, written by Klaus Schwab, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, and of course, a Bilderberger who was even on their steering committee at one point. He writes, quote, We need a great reset of capitalism. The Great Reset Agenda would have three main components. The first would steer the market toward fairer outcomes. Depending on the country, these may include changes to wealth taxes, the withdrawal of fossil fuel subsidies, and new rules governing intellectual property, trade, and competition. The second component of a Great Reset Agenda would ensure that investments advance shared goals such as equality and sustainability. Rather than using US, EU, Asia funds, as well as investments from private entities and pension funds to fill cracks in the old system, which they do and will continue to do anyway, we should use them to create a new one that is more resilient, equitable, and sustainable in the long run. This means, for example, building green urban infrastructure and creating incentives for industries to improve their track record on environmental, social, and governance metrics. And they can improve those by, of course, lying about it and rigging up the numbers as we've reported many years ago about Volvo and the great, of course, emissions scandal. The third and final priority of the Great Reset Agenda is to harness the innovations of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which just so happens to be the name of this guy's book. And that's going to support the public good. During the COVID-19 crisis, companies, universities, and others have joined forces to develop diagnostics, therapeutics, and possible vaccines, establishing testing centers, create mechanisms for tracing infections, and deliver telemedicine. Imagine what could be possible if similar concerted efforts were made in every sector." End quote. Now, this seems like another situation where not only James, are there massive schemes and scams just in our face, it seems again like they're using coded language. It's like they're using the phrase dark winter, as we discussed on our previous Neural Next Week episode. So I found a couple of interesting, just very easy to find examples of The Great Reset being around for at least the last dozen or so years. A 2010 book by a guy named Richard Florida. Yeah, Dick Florida. The Great Reset, How New Ways of Living and Working Drive Post-Crash Prosperity. He runs the Atlantic.com now. But an even earlier sci-fi series, of course, by a writer named Sean McKnight called Second Renaissance. Started online in 2007. They've got a whole entry on wiki of basically the future history of The Great Reset, 2009 to 2027. And, I mean, they really kind of already kind of kind of at it, James. Again, in a lot of these situations, they're just kind of uh, announcing it to us, right? They are. And at any rate, I suppose I'm grateful that it is being put completely out in the open. They are not hiding it anymore. They are putting it on the table because that is uh, the next stage of the crisis agenda that we're living through right now. Once again, for people who don't know, this is uh, a editorial by Klaus Schwab, who is the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum that has its fingerprints all over the COVID ginned up crisis of the last few months and is also, of course, host to the COVID action uh, platform that a lot of people have directed their attention to in recent weeks. So uh, I think this is an instructive little piece of, it's not even, I mean, it is propaganda, but it, in a sense, it is just putting it out on the table and putting it in black and white. And it's interesting how he does this in this article. I hope people will go and read through it in its entirety. But he starts by basically saying, you know, we're in crisis, everything's falling apart. We must build entirely new foundations for our economic and social systems. The level of cooperation and ambition this implies is unprecedented, but it is not some impossible dream. In fact, one silver lining of the pandemic is that it has shown how quickly we can make radical changes to our lifestyles. Almost instantly, the crisis forced businesses and individuals to abandon practices long claimed to be essential from frequent air travel to working in an office. I mean, this is social engineering 101 type of stuff that generally I would have to do some sort of propaganda watch to put it out on the table. You see, they're putting you through the crisis in order to re-engineer and a society in the way that, well, he's coming out and saying it. This is the perfect opportunity for us to re-engineer society. And when you go through that reset agenda that you, you just laid out there with those three main components, it's all completely non sequitur. What on 
earth does any of that have to do with this COVID crisis that we supposedly just narrowly lived through? <laughs> oh, wow. Oof, that was a close one. Uh, wh what on earth does any of this have to do with it? Restructuring the rules governing intellectual property or, you know, uh, coming up with a, some, you know, Green New Deal agenda. What on earth does that have to do with this? Nothing, of course, but that's kind of the point. They're coming out and saying it. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Here's a crisis. It shows that we can turn a, flip a switch and people will do what we say. So now we're going to flip a switch and you're going to do this and this and this and this. And it's not your place to reason about it or ask questions. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. What an interesting phrase. <laughs> yeah, and that's, of course, one of the giant multinational sweatshop corporate outlets who jumps all over this thing. Good God, I couldn't tell you how many stupid record labels have to go, oh, well, we stand with this thing everybody's mad about again. It's just posturing and just BS. I think in some ways there's a little, little, little bits of good news coming out of this, Jameson, actually, because they're talking about, oh, you know, we're going to build all these smart cities. Something we haven't talked about actually here, the update, Google's Sidewalk Labs canceled their smart city deal for Toronto with, you know, quietly, basically a couple of weeks ago. And really, I mean, the Agenda 2030 push to get us all crammed into mega cities is really taking a hit these last few months. So again, homeschooling, all these things, people are cooking at home more, growing their own food. There is some Christatunity here. And for our third and final story on this episode 410 of New World Next Week, we of course bring it back to the monarchy of media. And another one from ActivistPost.com. And again, everything we say will always be mentioned and, of course, listed and linked all down in the show notes. You can continue the research for yourself. At least 11 local news stations caught airing the exact same Amazon propaganda segment. Folks might remember the Conan O'Brien's pushing the envelope story from a few years back. This is essentially the same thing, but, of course, much more sinister. At least 11 local news stations in America were caught airing the same scripted segment about Amazon and their role during the COVID-19. 19 pandemic. We used to talk about these years ago on Media Monarchy. They were called VNRs, video news releases, and they're meant to look like it's real news from your local place, but they get it sent, it's all completed and done, and it's basically a commercial for Amazon. Touting the company's ability to keep its employees safe and healthy during this difficult time, despite the fact, of course, people are protesting on safe conditions and want hazard pay. The segment is narrated by Amazon spokesperson Todd Walker, who promises an inside look at an Amazon fulfillment center. And your trusted local news anchors who introduce the segment don't identify Walker as an Amazon employee, but make it look like he's one of the station's reporters. According to at least some journalists who actually refuse to air the segment, Amazon sent the video around to a long list of news sources with instructions about how to do it. Zach Rail, a reporter at ABC's Coco 5 News, tweeted a copy of the script and said it was mailed to him by Amazon's PR team. There were at least 11 other stations who were willing to play the footage that has been identified so far. And James, I recognize one of them. NBC affiliate WVVA from Southern West Virginia. I, I grew up propagandized by them and I turned out all right. So, James, before I throw it back to you, and we kind of talk about this, essentially, this is the, the, the government store. I mean, you can get your government grocery store, your government websites, your government newspaper, and it's all under one whole way Amazon house. So I, I play an hour every day of what's called old time radio, OTR, on my radio stream. One, because I love it. But two, I think it shows how propaganda works. Real obvious, ham-fisted World War II era propaganda. And we all laugh, oh my gosh, how could they have fallen for that? It's so obvious. But that's why they still do it, because it still works. And this is just part, I think, of the sort of open corporatism of everything. So we take it from... It's hard to call Amazon a microcosm in America, but we, we ratchet it out to the macro in the world. Corporate mega bailout bonanza has already begun in Europe. Airlines, automakers at the forefront, and of course the EU has waived pesky rules banning state aid. So James, it almost kind of seems again like the Die Hard 3 scenario of a fake terror event to distract from a, a bank robbery keeps kind of rolling out by script. Yes. Yes, it does seem that way, doesn't it? And I think this is the fundamental part of the Great Reset that we're living through right now. It is the outright uh, uncontested takeover of the complete global economy by the multinational corporations that manifests in all sorts of 
wacky ways that should appear wacky to us because at any rate, it's never been this blatant before. Here's an Amazon puff piece that we're going to play as news. I mean, of course, this has been done for a long time, but never quite this blatantly. And uh, and that's just a, a crystal clear example of it. But more to the point, the mega bailouts that are taking place in the EU and everywhere else, of course, are to support the multinational corporations, the too big to fails. Well, this time, instead of specifically in the banking industry, this is the corporate world generally. We can't let those airlines fail, so we will give them as much money as they could possibly need. And I hope people will go and read through that list from Wolf Street because it does emphasize the point that the few companies that were actually somewhat fiscally responsible and actually did have money stored away for any sort of crisis are now very angry at all of these, you know, corporate insider corporations that get bailed out because they were irresponsible and, well, we can't let them fail. Um, this is the fundamental part of what the Great Reset is about. It's about eliminating competition. One, if one were of the conspiratorial bent might even say that the real purpose of the past few months was to completely shake out the global economy of any of that pesky competition for the few main players who are going to monopolize the global economy. But we're not that conspiratorial here, are we, James? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't think we have to be. I think for over a decade, We've done work as New World Next Week that pretty much shows all of these scenarios have been pretty much planned. Again, they didn't just make up these ideas over the weekend and think, oh, what a great idea, digital dollar, let's see if people will buy that. And of course, as has been said, competition is a sin. James, that is the end of episode 410 of New World Next Week. And at the end of these episodes, I always like to invite folks to come check out my aforementioned radio stream. I do news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Mountain Time at Media Monarchy. I grew up again listening to the radio, and I've essentially made my own station that I think is probably better than most every other corporate radio station out in people's neighborhoods. It's news, it's music, it's a fantastic community of folks. Again, I, you know... I think it's fear free and, and a nice it's something folks say a lot when they get in there they're like wow this isn't really like other communities i've been in where people are of course always aggro and looking for a fight and this is not that at all folks can click through the discord widget on mediamonarchy.com slash listen they can come and get a free pass and check out the awesome media monarchy community james all right james i appreciate it take care and we'll talk again next week all right buddy peace <laughs>